This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 57. Should You Eat Fat in Your Post-Workout Meal? By J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hello again, welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Now don't forget, if there are other blogs out there that you want us to read from, definitely send us an email and let us know. We'll contact the authors of those blogs ourselves and see if we can read those on the air. Now today, I'm sporting a nice Captain America t-shirt with a shield on it. I'm not a Marvel or DC fanboy, I just like it all. I'm just a fanboy, period. Today's inspiring quote comes from Weight Watchers, believe it or not. No matter how you feel about Weight Watchers, they did definitely get something right. And that's where this quote comes from. Planning is stronger than willpower. All right, let's get right into the post and start optimizing your life. Should you eat fat in your post-workout meal? by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. A reader wrote to me because he heard eating fat in a post-workout meal was bad and wondered if the post-workout meal should be fat-free. Quote, Hey, J.C., first of all, thanks for all the help. You've been very helpful to me and I believe for everyone who reads your texts. I have a question. I heard sometimes that eating fat in a post-workout meal is bad. Is this correct? Should the post-workout meal be fat-free always? Best regards. End quote. This is a great question because it's something that's been talked about for years and for the longest time. The suggestion was to limit fat intake post-training to allow for a quicker absorption of nutrients. While this advice is not necessarily bad, it's not the most up-to-date, and it might not be practical for some people who can't eat as frequently or make a quick low-fat meal after their training sessions. To better understand this idea, let's look at digestion. The rate at which we digest food is based on many variables. Some of those are One, how much fiber is in the food. More fiber can slow digestion. Two, how many calories are in the meal. More calories take longer to digest. Three, if the meal is mixed, containing protein, carbohydrate, and fat, that will alter digestion as well. Four, the type of protein. Some types digest faster than others. Five, the type of carbohydrate. Simple sugars digest more easily than complex sources. So as you can see, the rate of digestion is going to vary wildly depending on how much food you eat, how much fiber's in the meal, and whether or not you have a mixed meal. So, should you limit your fat intake post-workout? Should you eat any fat in the meal right after training? The short answer is, it doesn't matter much either way. And here's why. Fat slows digestion, but eating fat post-workout will slow the digestion of the meal but it doesn't mean you won't see any benefits in muscle growth or glycogen replenishment. The reason for this is because what you eat post-workout isn't immediately shuttled into your muscles for use. The body has to break down the carbohydrates into glucose to be utilized and stored. The same goes for protein in that it has to be broken down into amino acids. In fact, the meal you have before training is likely more important for making sure your body is supplied with fuel it needs from carbs and amino acids for repairing the muscles during breakdown from exercise. Check out my pre-workout meal guide on my website to make sure you're eating properly before training. And listen, it's even backed by science. Quote, these results indicate that the response of net muscle protein synthesis to consumption of an EAC, essential amino acid carbohydrate supplement, solution immediately before resistance exercise is greater than that when the solution is consumed after exercise primarily because of an increase in muscle protein synthesis as a result of increased delivery of amino acids to the leg, end quote. Another idea is that if you eat fat post-workout, you miss out on the anabolic window due to how long it takes fat to break down, which has been touted as the sacred, limited window for maximizing your muscle and strength gains through precise nutritional protocols, read, making a whey shake and mixing in some waxy maize. However, a meta-analysis that looked at protein timing and its effects on strength and hypertrophy seemed to show us that as long as you're getting enough protein throughout the day, you're not going to see much benefit from a perfectly timed post-workout meal. Here's what the study had to say. Quote, 
In conclusion, current evidence does not appear to support the claim that immediate, less than or equal to one hour, consumption of protein pre and or post-workout significantly enhances strength or hypertrophic-related adaptations to resistance exercise. The results of this meta-analysis indicate that if a peri-workout anabolic window of opportunity does in fact exist, the window for protein consumption would appear to be greater than one hour before and after a resistance training session. Any positive effects noted in timing studies were found to be due to an increased protein intake rather than the temporal aspects of consumption, but a lack of matched studies makes it difficult to draw firm conclusions in this regard. End quote. So here's the good news. You don't have to suck down that whey protein shake immediately after your training session. Instead, you could have a snack or regular meal before training and then enjoy a full meal post-workout when you get back from the gym. Need to know more about protein intake? Check out this article on my website, How Much Protein Do I Need to Build Muscle and Lose Fat? Practical Application Instead of worrying about how much fat is in your post-workout meal, focus on your total daily intake of calories and your overall fitness goals. Here's a good checklist. One, aim to hit your total goal macronutrient intake by the end of the day. I prefer three to four meals, but the meal timing is likely not anything to worry about unless you're eating one to two meals per day and are doing some intense intermittent fasting. Two, try to have a meal before your training session, even if it's something small like a glass of juice and some yogurt. See my pre-workout meal guides for more ideas on my website. Three, don't worry about the fat intake post-workout. Only worry about hitting your desired total fat intake for the day. Fat is one of three macronutrients. Read my article on how to track macros if you're unfamiliar with this. Four, only use whey protein supplements if you have to. Whole food is often a better choice and much tastier at that. You just listened to the post titled, Should You Eat Fat in Your Post-Workout Meal? by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. Now, JC has references at the bottom of his post, so you can see who he's quoting by checking out his article, which is also linked on our website, oldpodcast.com. Now, for those of you that may not be familiar with some of these research terms that were used in this post, I'll just mention one thing. A meta-analysis, what JC referred to earlier, is basically where researchers take a bunch of articles around the same topic, in this case, post-workout meals and muscle growth, and then they look at all of those articles, and they look for commonalities, they look for strengths and limitations in each of those articles, and then they make a general conclusion. Meta-analyses are considered gold standards when it comes to research, because you're not just looking at one study, you're looking at a bunch of studies, which is a good thing. Now, I've been one of those who believed in the gotta eat your protein and carbohydrate within 20 to 30 minutes after a workout, because when I would go to conferences and I would look at the literature, that's what it said. That's what they were telling us. And so I'm so glad researchers finally did a meta-analysis to parse through all of this. And so the good news is, as JC mentioned, we don't have to stress too much about it. Now, before we end for the day, thank you so much for being a subscriber to this show. If you'd like to go above and beyond to help out, a really simple and free thing you can do right now is show someone how to subscribe to this podcast. So many people still don't know what a podcast is. And if you think they'd enjoy this content, it would be a really big help if you can direct them to our website, oldpodcast.com, or just show them how to subscribe on their phone. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. I hope you're having a great week so far, and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.